guys, it's Yaya Han here. I wanted to make a little video for you guys because it's been a little while and I'm trying to get in the habit of doing more videos because I'm actually really not very great on camera. Like I can take photos all day long but put a camera in, the, in my face and I'm just like... Mm. But anyway, a lot has happened in the last couple of weeks or months. Um, I just got through Dragon Con and, uh, you know, I'm just trying to sort of catch my breath and process everything that's happened in the last few weeks. Um, the most important thing that happened is that I rescued a little kitten off the highway interstate here in Atlanta. She literally was dodging cars and I happened to spot her and uh, pulled over, ran out, grabbed her. She was only five weeks old, um, full of fleas, but otherwise completely healthy, except her hip was out of, like, popped out of joint. So we're thinking that maybe she got actually, like, tossed out of a car or fell out of a car. So pretty awful. But this little kitten, I named her Arya after Arya Stark from my favorite series, Song of Ice and Fire, because I thought it just completely embodied her spirit. And um, I'm happy to report that she's been doing really well. Here she is. Ha ha ha. She's been doing really great. She's been growing. She I nursed her back to health, took her to the vet, um, starting to get her shots, you know, she's flea free and it's just absolutely a joy. She's like the sweetest little thing that I've ever been with. She's in play mode right now, so she wants to like get around and play. But hello, say hi to everybody. Hi Arya. Oh look at that. She's such a baby. So yeah, she's super sweet, she like sleeps on my neck, and she just, I just love her to death, and just absolutely love cuddling with her. She like, she cleans my face, she licks me and cleans me, and um, I, I'm just super in love with her. However, with my horrible travel schedule, it would be really unfair to keep her and try to make it work with her, either taking her with me to conventions or having someone come and um, watch her. And uh, I made the really horrible, heavy decision of um, giving her up to a family. Uh, so they're actually coming by tomorrow and they're going to pick her up and they're going to give her a great home because they're two children and uh, the mom works from home. So no matter what, she's going to have lots of people to play with and all the time will be taken care of. So um, I get to see her for... 12 more hours or something, so it's really hard, but it's the best thing for her, so that's my little Aria story she's definitely kept me really great company um, while I made costumes for Dragon Con, so I'll always remember those costumes and her being there and so yeah, but yes I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna let her run around if she wants to, there you go baby Anyway, um, besides Arya, the other big thing, I guess, is that uh, Heroes of Cosplay finally aired on Sci-Fi, and um, it's been a very long uh, journey for me. It was a difficult decision to begin with to um, join the show, just because cosplay is so very important to me. I've been doing it for so long. It really is. It's my life. It's my passion, and I really wanted to do everything I could to represent it in the right way. Um, obviously there's been a lot of uh, controversy. The community is not uh, very open to the idea of having a costly show. And uh, even before the show came out, there was just a lot of people already, they braced themselves to dislike the show no matter how it was going to be. I really believe that no matter how the show turned out, there were people who were already set to not like it. But as with everything that I do and have always done in my 14 years of being in this community of cosplaying, I try to focus on the positives and uh, try to, you know, really continue the message that I've always had about cosplaying. Uh, and if you think about it, Heroes of Cosplay only focuses on one small part of cosplay, which is the competition aspect. And 
it really is just an introduction of what cosplay is to people who don't know what it is. This show was not made for cosplayers because we already know everything about cosplay. We know the fun parts. We know the partying. We know the, you know, just randomly put together costumes and doing things uh, to be social with your friends. Like, we are cosplayers, so of course we know all of that. But people who have never known about cosplay, they have no idea what goes into these costumes. And if you, you have to agree with me that as cosplay has become more popular in the last few years, it has also um, been very diluted. And it's not been very much so about craftsmanship anymore. Now it's really like about just making a costume look cool and taking a cool photo. And so I think one really positive aspect of Heroes of Cosplay is that it really shows people the effort that goes into these costumes that we're making and um, that there really is no magical way for them to effortlessly appear on our bodies. Like, we have to make these no matter, you know, how they look. Or, there's just no other way. Uh, and so I'm thinking if you view the show as an introduction and not as an accurate representation of the entirety of the cosplay world, it might be a little easier to understand why the show is the way that it is. Because people who have never cosplayed before, if they watch the show and they get curious and they Google about cosplay, they will learn very fast what cosplay is all about. They will learn that it's about fun. It's about being with your friends, that not all costumes have to be perfect, um, that you don't have to enter a contest if you don't want to, but if you want to enter a contest, it can be really cool and fun as well. And people who go to conventions because they watch Heroes of Cosplay, they will very quickly understand what conventions are all about, all the different aspects of conventions, and what cosplaying at conventions can be like. So that's really all that I have to say on that topic. Um, there has been a lot of support. There really has been overwhelmingly positive, you know, very heartwarming support since the show aired. And I experienced that especially while I was at Dragon Con. I mean, there's so many parents, so many teenagers, so many young people coming up to me uh, saying that they love the show, they watch the show. Um, families, entire families, you know, down like three generations coming up to me and saying, you know, we watch the show as a family and even that, oh, we want to cosplay now as a family. We came to this convention because of Heroes of Cosplay and now we're going to come back every year and we're going to dress up next year. Um, I mean, that, how can you judge something that is going to bring families together that is going to bring the next generation of cosplayers onto the scene. Um, I had a mother come up to my booth at Dragon Con. She uh, wanted me to sign a print of my Battle Angel for her daughter. And her daughter is 17 years old. And as I was signing, this mother told me the story that her daughter was really depressed for the last two years because her best friend passed away unexpectedly and uh, she was so down that she wasn't being social she was just kind of locked away in her room and didn't find any joy in things and then she watched Heroes of Cosplay with her family and now she's making costumes she is hanging out with her friends they're socializing she's planning to go to conventions which is a huge step I think for I mean she just it's just absolutely amazing and you know the mom she started tearing up and then I started tearing up and I was just like oh my god I, I just I cannot even believe that something you know that I was a part of could have touched somebody in that way and that just meant a lot to me and that is literally like what I hold on to whenever there is criticism or there is a lot of negativity I'm just like at least I helped a teenage girl to find something that she enjoys again. So, Anyway, because I have received so many different 
emails and tweets and Facebook posts about how to get started with cosplay from people who have never known about it before. I really want to write a um, article with tips for beginning cosplayers. Um, and uh, there has been definitely a lot of topics that people want to see covered, so most likely it will become a series of articles. But before I just, you know, put out a wall of text and I wanted to, you know, include in the video some tips that I think are really useful overall. The most important tip that I can give anybody is do your research. Like, seriously, do your research. There is no shortcut. There is no magic way um, that, that, that will lead you to the ultimate way of cosplaying. There are no step-by-step -step instructions on how to make this specific costume from beginning to end. Uh, there really is no shortcut. You have to, have to, have to put in the hard time of researching. The literally most important tip that you will ever find in cosplay is practice your Google food. Practice Googling. Get used to Googling for hours. Get used to reading on different websites on how people have done different things. Uh, get used to going on YouTube and watching a million videos on how to make something. Google foo. Practice it. You should get really good at Google foo and then you can cosplay, literally. That is the best tip I can give anybody. Cosplay is a hobby. Cosplay is an art form. Cosplay is not a sport. It's not like I can coach you and tell you exactly how to cosplay. For each person, it means something completely different. For example, an Iron Man suit can be made a hundred different ways. You can't just come to somebody and say, how do I make an Iron Man suit? Tell me exactly how to do it. Because each person approaches the costume differently. They interpret it differently. And that is the beauty of it, is that you know, a costume, a character can be something very special to each person. You can make an Iron Man suit with cardboard, you can make it with EVA foam, you can make it with fiberglass, you can vacuum form it, you can um, make it with either Wonderflex or Warbla, you can make it with yoga mats, uh, you can do resin casting, um, you can do a mixture of these different things for the different parts, depending on what you need, you know. I have seen Iron Man's that have, you know, it, the torso is made out of something flexible, like rubber, so that they can, you know, actually still sit down and move around. And it really is, com there's so many ways to interpret a costume. So practice your Google foo. Find out how exactly you would want to make costumes. People are very open to sharing their um, experiences. So you can go on a forum like the RPF or the Superhero Costuming Forum and see what other people have done with their costumes because they will post progress and they will tell you, uh, or you can just search in threads. You don't even have to ask a question. You can literally go and search for threads where people have already asked a question before you. Because anything you want to know, somebody's probably asked it before you have. So, you know, don't think that there aren't answers out there, because they there really are. Like, if I want to know how to make something that I've never made before, if I want to start a new technique, learn something new, I don't go on my Facebook page and say, how do I do this? Like, I will go on Google and look for hours and dig through forums and read how other people have done something or read on, you know, how to get a material until I find something that speaks to me, that I think is uh, something that I can get into. And really, that's how I've been cosplaying for the last 14 years, and I'm still learning new things, you know? And I, even if you know something, it doesn't hurt to go and look for a tutorial to refresh your memory and to, you know, maybe give you an even better way to do something. So, be curious. Be quizzical, be um, adventurous, don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so the, just so I'm not leaving you in this video, this very long video now, without any concrete tips, let me talk about how you can choose characters. 
you should not choose a character only based on how you look, because that would be very boring. Cosplay would be incredibly boring if everybody only cosplayed characters that they already looked like. The whole point with cosplay is transforming yourself into a character. Some of these characters are not human. Some of these characters are, you know, fantastical, immortal beings. And that's Arya, by the way, all that noise. Um, so it really is about choosing a character that you want to be. It doesn't have to mean that it's your favorite character. It doesn't have to mean that you know every single trivia about that character. You you know play the game from beginning to end, and you you know live and breathe the character. It just has to be a character that you connect with in some way, that speaks to you in some way, and it should be a character that you can envision yourself as. All the characters I've cosplayed over the years, they're just characters that I could see myself portraying. Or they were costumes that I thought would be cool to make, that would be challenging to make. And so a lot of times, even if you don't know everything about a character, when you cosplay that character, it actually brings you closer to the character. It makes you want to find out more about it. It makes you fall in love with that character even more. So there have been times where I was drawn to a costume design but ha didn't know who the character was. Um, but then through the process of making the costume, researching, then really connected with the character. So it's really like there, there shouldn't be a grand rule of how you should choose your character. You should really just cosplay who you want. And that definitely goes for going outside your ethnicity, outside your skin tone, outside your height or weight or body size. I literally cannot stress it enough that cosplay is a fan expression. It is not, you know, haute couture modeling. It really is just for anybody to express how much they want to be a fictional character. That is what cosplay means. You should choose a character or a costume design that you can replicate, you know, in like rationally. You can rationally think in your head, I think I can actually make this costume. So if it's your first costume, you shouldn't maybe choose Optimus Prime or, you know, you know, War Machine or something. Like just think about what your skills are. Think about you know, what have you learned over the years? You know, are you good with working with wood? Are you good with sewing? Are you good with makeup? Are you good with uh, whatever? And then play to your strength. Choose a character with a costume that you think you can do. It can be a very simple costume. It can be a um, costume that you piece together from bought pieces. Because there is a lot of uh, effort even in sourcing the materials and sourcing the different pieces that make up a costume. There is merit in that. Uh, choosing the right wig, choosing the right shoes, choosing the right jacket. Uh, so even if you don't make a costume, you could um, put a lot of effort into getting the different pieces together and then you could maybe make something on the costume. Even if it's just one accessory or one little prop, if you make something on the costume, it will automatically make you feel more proud. It makes you more attached to the costume. It's just, it's a more enjoyable experience to make something physically with your hands and then to be able to hold it or wear it and have it be a part of your costume. Uh, if you want to just experience what it's like to be in costume and you don't want to get stressed out with how to make it, purchase a costume. Commission it. You know, there are plenty of... Uh, resources out there, either people will custom make you one or you can buy one off Etsy or off eBay and just, you know, let go of the stress and just go to the convention, put on your costume and just have fun with it. You know, see what it's like for people to stop you for pictures. Um, that is completely okay and that is completely cool in cosplay and that is completely encouraged as well. You know, just because I personally really like to make costumes, I'm not going to, um, you know, say that's the only way you can cosplay. So, you know, 
if you want to buy a costume, go for it. But if you think that you want to make a costume, start simple and work your way up. Gain experience. Practice your Google Foo and practice your different skills. Be open-minded and uh, gather skills. When you gather skills, then all of a sudden your cosplay horizon expands and there are more characters that you can cosplay and it's really exciting. And, um, you know, ultimately it is more rewarding, I think, to make a costume and wear it because to me uh, and to many cosplayers, cosplay is 50% craftsmanship and 50% performance. So if you merge these together, then you have a wonderful, awesome cosplay experience. And so yes, look for my articles coming out on probably my Facebook because my website is under construction at the moment. So on uh, Facebook.com, Yaya Cosplay, I'll be posting uh, various tips for beginner cosplayers. And um, you know, keep sending me questions. Post in the comments below what you would like me to talk about in those articles, and maybe I'll make another video or so and talk to you some more about some tips. Um, so yeah, comment below with what you want me to say, what you want, or what you want me to talk about. And um, in the meantime, practice your Google Foo for cosplay.